Hi friends, so a few days ago I made Theo his own rabbit bed that has the edges raised. Some people might know it as a hop and flop that's made by the well-kept rabbit. Definitely check them out. Um, so a lot of people were wondering if I had a pattern and I don't have a pattern, but I thought I'd make a quick video to kind of give you an idea how to do it yourself. So some basic items that you're going to need will include a tape measure. I've lost my sewing one, so I'm using household one some pins, of course scissors, I've also got my sewing machine with thread there, and a fabric. I've chosen a fabric that's more of a fleecy type fabric to add extra comfort for the rabbits. So an important thing to do is to make sure you measure the length of your rabbit. Keep in mind that when they're laying down their legs may be out so you can add extra measurements to account for that. For Theo, I have one here that's about 17 inches. It might be a little bit short but comfortable nonetheless. The second measurement that you're going to take is going to account for the width of your rabbit. For Theo, I'm doing about 8 inches. You want to make sure that the bed is rather snug when the sides are up. This will add extra comfort for the rabbits and help reduce anxiety. This particular piece of fabric I have already cut is about 22 inches. When I take away the 8 inches that will be needed in the middle for Theo, that will leave 7 inches on each side for the area that's going to be stuffed. That's probably quite a bit and you can certainly do less. On the smaller example here that I have for my baby bun, what I've done is I've turned the fabric inside out. This is essential. I've sewn the three sides and left one side unsewn. It's very important that you leave this side unsewn because that's the, where you're going to add the stuffing to be able to raise the sides of the bed. Now that the edges are good and sewn, I've turned the fabric back outwards. It's important that you do this when you're about to sew the panels to add the stuffing to. If you sew the panels before turning it inside out, you're not going to be able to and you're going to be stuck with the inside fabric. Now that I'm about to sew the edges, it's important that you have some sort of marker so that they're even and you know how to stay on your line. For me, instead of drawing a line on the fabric, which would be perfectly fine, I'm going to freehand it because my machine has a specific line on the side and I know that I can keep the fabric in place so that it's even. For this little bed for my baby, I'm doing about three inches on each side. Just a reminder that when you start your stitch and when you get to the end of your stitch, be sure that you do a backward stitch to add extra strength to your bed, especially if you have a bunny who is rather good at uh, bun instruction, such as mine. Now that we've finished that part, you can kind of see the lines that we have here. My lines aren't perfect, but honestly the rabbits aren't going to care. It is now ready to be stuffed. So we have the two sides here, right here, and right here, and this is where I'm going to add the stuffing to raise the edges for the rabbits. So as you can see, I've got the sides stuffed, and I've just stuck some pins in there to be able to keep the stuffing in. Now, I don't put anything in the middle of my rabbit beds, but you can definitely buy a little bit of fleece and just cut that out to the shape and then stuff it to add that extra comfort in the middle if you feel it's necessary. Now, when it comes to the edging, you have a few options. For the first one that I had made for Theo, I actually hand stitched um, the outside edges. Another option, which would be a lot faster than hand stitching, would be to actually just make sure that there's a little bit of space there, tuck it under, and go through the whole entire side with your sewing machine. Because I haven't tried that one yet, I'm going to try it for this one and give you guys an example. I do just want to share the options of rolling it over. If you're going to roll it over to sew it, it would be quite simple, you can just do it this way. Um, my rabbits aren't going to care either way, so I'm going to actually do it uh, just this easy way. If you're a little bit OCD, then you're likely going to want to do it this way. It looks a bit more polished. It's really just a matter of taking the edges, folding them a little bit on each side, and then you're going to want to pin it along the way so that it stays in that position as you sew. You're not going to want to put the pins this way. You're going to want to put them lengthwise. If you're going to do it this way, then what you need to make sure you do is that you don't sew all the way to the edge. You're going to want to make sure that you leave the right amount of room and stop your sewing here. Make sure that you do your back stitch 
so that it's extra strong. If you don't do that, then you're going to run into the situation where you can tuck this in here, but I'm not going to be able to carry that through here, and it's going to look slightly awkward. So as you can see there, we've got the edges done, it's sewn, it actually looks really cute, even though I've just tucked the edges behind the back. Um, you would never be able to really tell from the top. I'm super happy with it. Um, it's perfect for Timbit. He'll really grow into it. I've left it a little bit wide here. There is a little bit of a trick you can do if you find that you have made it a little bit too wide, or maybe you've made it wide for now so that your rabbit can grow into it. And that's really just the case of adding a stitch. So you can kind of roll your hop and flop inwards, like so, on both sides. Hard to do with one hand. And then you can hand stitch a little bit of a dart. Maybe you need a few. So I can stitch one here in the middle and at the end. And that will make it a little bit more snug should the bun be a bit smaller. So there we go. We've got a cute little hop and flop. Timbit's going to love it. Um, I bought all of my stuff from a small local sewing shop um, owned by a family here where we live on Vancouver Island. Um, and I would really encourage you guys to kind of look locally and see if there's any small local business that you can support, especially right now. But if that isn't an option for you, then all of this is definitely available online. Um, you can pretty much use any type of stuffing. I personally really liked this. It's made in the U.S., which is nice. Um, and it is machine uh, washable, which is great because having a baby, it's going to be uh, peed on rather quickly. <laughs> so enjoy your crafting and post pictures once you're done. I can't wait to see.